Hey, what's going on? Hayden Crabtree here. I'm the author of this book, Skip the Flip, and I'm coming to you today to talk to you about what is the commercial real estate bubble? Are we in a commercial real estate bubble? Should you even care if you're a real estate investor, if we're in a bubble or not? And so, you know, this book, Skip the Flip, if you've read it, talks all about the power of commercial real estate investing, value add investing, how the wealthy invest, the tax benefits they get from it. And so I love all things commercial real estate and I really want everyone who watches this channel to eventually get into commercial real estate because that's how you make huge sums of money in really short periods of time. Uh, and you can do so with tax advantage, you know, sales, tax advantage income, everything, right? The game of commercial real estate is set up for the wealthy and protecting their wealth. So I want you to dive into that. And so it's obviously important because we're in this unique time period of 2021. And we've really been in this time period for a couple of years where commercial real estate pricings are at just an extreme all time high. Okay. I really think the market is kind of irrational right now, but I want to dive in and talk to you a little about my thoughts of whether we're in a bubble or not. And so a bubble essentially meaning that prices are way too high uh, for what the fundamentals support. Whenever I think of a bubble, that's what I think of. Other people may have their own definitions, but whenever I think of a bubble, I think that prices are way too high for the fundamentals, right? So a great example is the fundamental support, you know, this piece of real estate or this business or this stock being a million dollars, right? But in reality, when we go look at the pricing, it's selling for one and a half million dollars, two million dollars. And really the bad thing about bubbles is that once somebody has become irrational, there's no stopping point of how far their rationality, if that's a word, can go, right? Because if I can justify paying $1.5 million for something that's worth one, I can also justify paying 1.8 million, 2 million, 2.5. It's like, at what point does their rationality behind this stop? And I really think we've seen that. I thought in 2019 prices were too high. I thought in 2020 prices were definitely too high and they were gonna crash. And then 2021 prices just keep going. So we're talking a little bit about what makes that up, what you can do right now to make sure you don't have bubble mentality and you're not investing into the bubble, you're protecting yourself. And so that's the purpose of today's video. If you've been hunting, if you've been looking for commercial real estate, you know prices are really, really high. It's hard to find a deal. Uh, and that's pretty much the topic of today's video. So with that being said, let's dive in. So the first thing to know is that commercial real estate prices are valued based off of their income. In the housing market, which is a bubble in and of itself right now, or maybe it's not a bubble, right? Because we have the demand of 4 million housing units in the US. And so we could see those prices continue to go and go and go. Whereas in the commercial world, we have to ask ourselves, what is continuing to drive prices up? So in the commercial world, all of our properties are valued based off of income, okay? So again, if you've read the book, we talk about cap rates, we talk about NOI, net operating income, we talk about how commercial purchase prices are actually come up with. And so it's pretty much NOI divided by cap rate equals our purchase price. And normally, you know, there is no exact normal range of cap rates, but generally speaking, people go and invest in real estate to get a little bit of a higher return than they can in other places, right? Whether that be stable places that are very risk-free, risk-free like bonds, or whether it's in the stock market where you can average out seven, eight percent. People want to go into real estate, they want to take on the risk of buying a building that can potentially break down or that can have tenants move out, that is risk. And we want to be rewarded for going out and buying that risk with a higher return. So all cap rates are is a measure of what is our annual return on this property uh, for how much we paid for it. So a quick example, if a building produces $70,000, and we go and we buy it for a million dollars, I'm gonna get a 7% return on that, okay? And normally we'd feel pretty good about a 7% return. Of course, we'd love to earn way more and we can through the power of leverage and appreciation on the purchase price by adding money to the NOI, but we're just talking about straight cash flow. How much do we wanna earn in return of, of dividends for this investment that we've made? And so whenever we think about a bubble, what that really means is that the, the $70,000 that we're buying, we're not buying that $70,000 anymore for a million dollars, right? That annual $70,000, we may be buying that now for 1.2 million. We may be buying that for 1.5 million. And in some cases, we might be buying that $70,000 for 2 million, meaning the cap rate has been cut in half and also the return on that property has been cut in half. So we're in a very crazy world right now where uh, commercial prices 
really have just seen a tremendous, tremendous increase over the long haul. And I think the biggest reason for that is how much money is out there in the world today. So, so much money has been printed, so much money has been created, uh, that really the rich have gotten richer and they're just looking for places to invest their money. And of course we know in supply and demand when there's competition, the more people who want an asset, okay, the more people who want an asset, the more somebody among that pool is gonna be willing to pay. So if we have one piece of property, we have only one person interested, it's not very tough negotiation, right? The only people in the negotiation are the person who owns the property and the one person who wants to buy it. But if there are more buyers created because more money is put in the system that needs to go find a place to go, well, let's say that the, the, the money in the world doubles and now we have two buyers, right? Well, now these two buyers have to compete against each other and whichever one's willing to pay the highest price or another way to say that is whichever one is willing to accept the lowest return, that is the person that's gonna win that property. So if somebody is willing to pay more for that property and accept a lower return, the value of that asset will go up and therefore other assets in the market will also go up. Because here's the thing, if there's one seller and there's two buyers, well, guess what happens? Maybe another seller enters the market and the other seller may say, wow, look, I saw that John down the street sold his property for way more than I thought it was worth. Maybe I'll think about selling mine. And so now that balances it because this other buyer may have gone over here because they can get a better deal. And traditionally, there's normally been an even mix of buyers and sellers in the market, right? Whenever we have buyers and sellers in the market, then other people can link up and put their capital to work and the market stays around where it should be, which again, I'm not saying 7% cap rate is where it should be, but we always want our real estate uh, or the purpose of real estate is to always be an alternative place to put your capital where you can earn a little bit more money, protect your wealth, and uh, you know, because it carries some risk, we're gonna be rewarded a higher return rate than other risk-free assets like bonds. Uh, so whenever we go out in the market and there's just been more and more and more buyers created because more money has been printed, more of the large institutions that have a lot of money, those are the people who have those trillions of dollars that have been created and they need to find somewhere to put those trillions of dollars to work. Rich people, wealthy people, they don't like to just have money sitting around. They like to put money to work in investments so that their money can go out and they can bring back friends, right? That's the goal of investors is to take the money I have, send them out, Tell them to bring back some friends so that they grow. My dollars, I want them to grow and grow and grow. And that's really how wealth is built, right? So wealthy people don't just get rich, get wealthy by sitting around on money. They want to put that money out in the universe, out to go work. And so the more money that's created, the more places that we have to go and we have to put this money to work. So in my mind, the bubble has been created because nowadays there's a lot of money that's been printed okay and one of the things that's more prevalent than ever is the amount of people who want to protect themselves against inflation we've seen it tremendously right i went to chipotle last night uh, and the price of my bowl that i always get has gone up the price of gas is up i'm spending more at the grocery store i'm sure you see it too in your own life everything's prices are going up and people especially you know wealthy people in the world are extremely aware of this and so inflation hurts when it, you know, the dollar gets inflated by 2%, it hurts if you have $10,000. It really hurts if you have a million dollars. But if you have 10 million, $100 million, guess what, that 2% inflation, that really hurts. If you have $100 million and you get hit with 2% inflation, you've effectively lost $2 million by not protecting yourself against inflation. And so wealthy people want to go and they want to protect themselves against inflation. One of the ways to do that is to hold real assets like real estate. And so I think that there are less people than ever today that want to sell their properties and there's more people than ever today that want to buy their pro buy new properties, not necessarily this one person's, but they just want to go out and buy good properties uh, that you know are going to protect them from inflation, that are going to grow their money. And so we've seen people, you know, with the influx of new buyers in the market, of more buyers in the market, the existing buyers having more money than ever in the market, and the limited supply of people who want to sell their properties. We've seen this this essentially fight over the buyer pool of who is willing to accept the lowest return for the available investments out there. Okay, and so what that means is these prices are gonna go up and up and up. A property that may be worth $1 million, well guess what, if I buy that property for $1.2 million, I've overpaid on that property by 20%, 
as the buyer who overpays on it, but what happens if I don't put my money to work at all? What is my opportunity cost if I don't you know, go out and buy this? Because I may have been getting a 7% return, but if I buy it for 1.2 million, I'm probably getting like a 5% return, right? Doesn't mean that I've made the worst investment ever. It's just that my return compared to market returns are gonna be down. And so buying something for 1.2 that's worth a million, guess what, if inflation comes, and that property is going to appreciate over the years, I'll eventually get back to where I want to go, right? And I've put my money to work. That was my goal, to put my money to work. I may have paid too much for what it's worth today, but that's a lot better than the alternative of paying taxes, getting beat up by inflation, and not earning any return at all. So it makes sense to why people are willing to overpay for real estate if they have a ton of money. Now, that leaves us everyday investors who don't have a hundred million dollars, uh, you know, a billion dollar fund. That makes it really hard on us, right? Because our goal is to go find a property it's worth a million dollars and we want to buy it for 800,000, right? We want to make instant money. We don't want to earn a 7% return. We want to earn a 15% return, a 20% return, a 30% return. We want really good returns because that's how we build wealth, right? If I only have $100,000 or if I only have $10,000, I need to find opportunities that are gonna give me big returns so that I can get to that million, 10 million, 100 million dollar playing field sooner rather than later, right? It's gonna take us a really long time of actually going out and, and trying to grow that kind of wealth over the long term. See, we're playing a different ball game, right? Everyday investors, we are playing offense. We're trying to say, how can I go make money? How can I go create wealth? How can I buy assets underneath what they're worth? Versus the people who are in the market right now, they're playing defense. They're saying, how in the world can I not lose 2% a year on my billion dollar fund? How can I not lose this amount of money on my, you know, on my assets? I'm okay with 5%, 7% would be great, but I need you know, 5%. I think the market's gonna crash, right? And another thing that's happening right now is people think that the stock market's overvalued. Stock market has a tendency to evaporate in one night. Well, guess what? If we go out and we invest in real estate and values drop, as long as our cash flow stays, as long as we're in a, uh, you know, an asset, a building, uh, a market that continues to do okay and people pay their rent, then we're fine. As long as we don't have to pay our debt off through a debt balloon, then we'll be okay. We will get to where we need to be eventually, right? So a lot of people who buy real estate today, they're not buying it to sell next year. They're not buying it to sell in a couple years. They're buying it, setting themselves up to if they have to hold on to this real estate for seven, 10, 15 years, guess what, that's okay. And they're gonna be okay in the long run because inflation is gonna help pay their debt down or really devalue their debt. And inflation is gonna help you know, inflate the value of their assets and their money is at work. So we can see why people are willing to overpay, but what do we do as Main Street investors? How do we compete with this? Well, the first answer is, is it's tough to compete with that. And we just have to accept the fact that we are at a disadvantage compared to other people with huge funds. You know, but you already knew that, right? If you're gonna get into the real estate game, you have to know you're competing against bigger fish, you're competing against the sharks, you're the guppy in the water, and that's fine. If you can accept that fact, then you can take control of that fact. The next thing to know is that, remember in, earlier we talked about how there's one seller and there's one buyer, right? And if you go in on market deals right now and you're trying to compete against all, you know, just the line of people. I'll tell you a quick story. A buddy of mine here in Atlanta who's also a self-storage investor, put a bid in on a property the other day and the asking price on this property was $16 million. He offered $16 million for this property and he didn't even make it to the next round of bidding. All right, what that means is he offered full price for what they were asking on this property and they told him, you don't even have a chance of winning this. So it's just really hard, even if we're willing to go and step in on market deals uh, and offer full prices, even above what we think they're worth, we can still lose. So what do we have to do? We have to reduce our competition. And so the way that we reduce our competition is off market deals, guys. You in inflated markets, in bubbles, in times like today, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be investing because just like the rich, just like the wealthy, we need to put our money to work. We, even if we only have $10,000, even if we only have a thousand dollars, even if we only have a hundred thousand dollars, doesn't matter how much money you have, you have to protect yourself from inflation and you have to put your money at work. A big reason is I, I hear this all the time hey, we're at the top, I'm gonna wait. Well, guess what? If you haven't built the skills, if you haven't built the knowledge to know what a good deal is, to how to find a good deal, how to negotiate, how to get deals under contract, if you haven't built those good deals, 
of those skills right now to find and put under contract and close good deals. When the market does crash, guess what? All your competition is going to go away. There are going to be other people who are also waiting for this but know what to do. You guys have to start building those skills today to prepare yourself for the future whenever the market does correct and you can go out and find and pick up deals at normal prices. Okay. By the way, it could be a really long time. It could be several, several years before we see an actual crash or a market correction. Why is that? Because our government guarantee you will step in and they will say, hey, by the way, we're not going to allow any foreclosures on X, Y, and Z. They may say we're not going to allow any foreclosures on retail buildings and multifamily, but we'll allow them on industrial and this. And so I don't know what's going to happen. I think we'll see some sort of government intervention. But what you need to know is that if you're sitting on the sidelines and you're waiting, you could be waiting a really long time. So we have to go find off-market deals where we're not competing with a ton of other people and where we can go out, we can build relationships with the owner, we can figure out what their problems are, we can solve their problems, and we can find a deal that's great for us today. What it also means is if it, we feel like we're in a bubble, if we think we're in a bubble and we feel like prices could drop, how do we pick it up at good prices? And so the answer may not be how do I pick this up at prices that's going to be protected if, if the market does drop, I'm still buying below what the value will be in the future. The question is how do I protect myself against me needing a recapitalization event, meaning I need to sell it, I need to refinance my property because my debts do. The question should be how do I protect myself from that, okay? Because if you go out and you buy a property today, let's just say for a million dollars, and you get an $800,000 loan on it, and then the property, the, you know, the market, everything drops, and the property value goes down to 700000 well, you're underwater on that property. And I don't want anybody to be underwater, but just the truth is, is that as market cycle, that may happen, right? But you're, you will be fine if you owe 800000 the property's worth 700000 in the market. You will be fine unless you need to sell or you need to refinance, okay? So how do we protect ourselves from that? Number one, set your business plan up to know that you need to be holding these properties for the long term, right? Don't ever have a three-year business plan at the top of a bubble, right? Have a seven-year, have a 10-year business plan and make sure that the length of your debt reflects that okay so that's all i got if you guys have any any comments questions anything about the commercial real estate bubble about how to protect yourself from a downturn another big tip i'll say this make sure you have cash on hand you don't want to have all your cash just sitting idle but make sure you have some form of reserves for all of your properties to make sure that hey if the market crashed and all my tenants didn't pay me for a month or two months i could weather this storm for a month or two months make sure you have that cash on hand consider it a part of that investment and making sure that when you make that investment you're putting money aside up front and that you're earning a return on that money as well okay so these are my tips if you guys have comments questions let me know below i'd love for you to share this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we're putting out new helpful content every single week i'll see you guys in the next video